All right. Hello, guys. I just want to make a nice video today for you. This is a very good game that I um, played the other day because I'm climbing back a little bit about myself. I've been challenger before. I peaked around rank 30 in North America. And I just wanted to present you guys a video that I think is very informative. You get to see it's a very long game, so I'm going to be playing it on times two speed and going over my decisions. And I think there's a lot you can take from this, especially if you're a newer player in the game. And I'm going to do an over-explained run where I'm going to explain each thing. Usually when you start off the game, guys, especially if you're better than the ELO you're at, you're going to want to vote on net neutral things unless you have a strategy coming into the game of playing a certain thing. If you want to play Yone reroll, maybe you're leaning towards an augment that supports that or like the uh, events or whatever it is. Or maybe if you're a fast nine player, you'd want to go for the prismatic based augments or things like that or like econ based. They would better support you. So starting off into this game, I'm going to be buying any pairs that I see. So we bought a Caitlyn pair, we got the York, we got the other Jazz on the bench, right? We got a few bad components. I wouldn't recommend you guys slam anything until you start uh, getting a little bit direction. And um, as you can see, I'm just buying I'm buying pairs. Very unlucky with 75% odds to get this many green units in our shop, but it is what it is. You know, a lot of people don't think about that. And we're just going to be new boot goofing on them. Um, starting off... So I will go through these. Not every video do I go through the augments, but I think it's beneficial for the newer players to get a frame of mind. So coming in, this is going to be epic. Every time a unique mythic champion becomes epic, gain two of player health and three gold, gain a Cho'Gath or a Kog'Maw. Now this is very good to get on this interval because usually if you're going to reroll Kog'Maw, you're not going to hit that XP button at all. You're going to let your natural XP that you get every two XP f flow into you. And then you would choose this, you get a free Cho'Gath and Kog'Maw. I would have already have liked to have a Cho'Gath pair, Kog'Maw, Malphite, because that's usually the avenue you're going into. You're going Cho'Gath, Malphite, and Nico, and then you'd be going from there, right? What doesn't kill you? Gain two gold after losing a player combat, gain a random component after four losses. I think this is good if I had like a fortune opener. I really don't like the idea of open streaking and losing in the start of the game. Um, because you're already deciding to give up a ton of HP when you might have had the ability to win streak the whole game. So, I mean, usually people want to fast get this. And then best friends... Um, what basically attack speed and armor always going to be good. It's always a good combat augment. Now, one thing you guys have to think about, a lot of people don't think about this. This is a gold tier augment. So it's going to be a lot more powerful than any other augments. If you get a silver away, yada, yada, yada. So finding another combat augment later in the game that could be silver on par with this gold combat augment is going to be very hard to do. This means a guy's basic level 8, 2 star 4 cost board with this combat augment is going to perform a lot better than, let's say, you doing like a reroll comp with some silver augment or something like that. It, it really pushes teams over the edge, but a lot of, you know, it is what it is. So we're going to keep moving here. Divine rolls. Basically, you want to go divine rolls if you're going like Yone. You know, very rarely, you, you you would go like Heavenly Yone with Divine Rules, but I would I would like to see Kazakh Pair already on my bench. You know, you need a little bit more along with it, right? And then Reaper Crest. This is always good. I mean, if you want to force Yone, these are probably one of the two best augments to force Yone. Um, but usually, I would recommend if you guys are going Yone, if you're going Volibear, if you're going Tristana. Usually, on your last neutral, you can pop an Orb and get a free three cost. It feels very bad, and I've told this to other people, when you're choosing augments, you do not want to choose something that is going to be railroading you the rest of your game. If I pick Divine Rules here, I am playing Heavenly the rest of my game. If I'm choosing Reaper Crest, I am playing, like, Reapers. I don't have any flexibility. There's no way to pivot here. I'm at 2-1 for a 30 or 40 minute game that I'm sitting down for. I am railroading myself into an avenue that I have to play. So I'm probably going to go best friends because of that reason, right? People don't think about it that way, though. So we got a little bit of our pairs here. And we're seeing already kind of the Senna. We're seeing the Senna Jax combination over here, the Forbidden Technology. And we do a little bit of a staggering. Now, we're going to use our team planner here, which is what I recommend all of you do. 
We're going to highlight the units for the reroll Senna comp, which you don't always have to go right now because Kaisa got a buff and Kaisa is very good. So worse comes to worse. If you don't naturalize a lot of Senna's or the other ghostly units and ink shadows, you always can just push up and just kind of tech in Kaisa with like ghostly and try to make the most out of it, especially if you're not hitting right away. Another thing to note is we, well, first of all, because of best friends, but if we didn't have best friends, we would stagger our snipers like this together. So eventually, if you get a last whisper, you're both, you're shredding the armor on the unit that they are both hitting. Um, another thing to note here, and I see people do it all the time, and um, especially when I'm watching people's Twitch streams, <clears throat> which, by the way, I have a Twitch stream, so go check it out, uh, scruffly.twitch.tv or whatever it is. It's my username in this game. When you get gargoyles, you want to solo frontline them. So you see how I got the panda up here with the gargoyles on the front? You do this because every unit that is targeting him at the start gives bonus armor and magic resist rather than if we had the Aatrox staggered up one hex. Then they're hitting both the Aatrox and the bear. And then because of that, you're not gaining full value of your item. Which, as you can see here, when they chicken Caesar salad wrap around my homie, he's actually hella tanky and it gives my team time to chew through him. Now... Usually when you're playing this comp, Senna Caitlyn, you're going to follow standard leveling. So here on 2-5, we're going to level up to 5. Level 3-2, we're going to level up to 6. And then we're going to chill on level 6 where we have a 30% chance for or 40% chance for rolling. Now, another thing to note, I was going to pick up the Aatrox here because it's Aatrox pair with Rando and Zoman. But lo and behold, we have best friends value. So I can't use Randoins where everything has to wrap around the random ones again an armor magic resist if i have this augment so what i had to do i had to choose black cleaver which all in all i don't think is the best radiant item but now it checks a big lot of boxes in our uh, book i don't need last whisper i don't need any type of shred it gives my team full um uh, i think it's adap percentage and it's a very good item it also finishes our second tier item slot on senna which is our main damage dealer along with the um ink shadow buff and we're just going to be holding on to pairs here. Usually, if you guys don't know, around 2, 5, 2, 6, you want to be around 20 gold. If you're running where you're at econ-wise, usually around 2, 5, you want to be around 10 after you level. And then around um, th uh, 2, 5, 2, 6, you want to be around, you know, a good 20 gold. This guy here, he's been hard loose streaking. That's why he's at 50 he didn't level up at all. He didn't put no money into his XP bar. That's why he's at 50 gold, which is a lot of gold, by the way. Um, hopefully here from our Krugs, we don't just get items and we get that little bit of gold to bring us a 30 gold interest. So we'll be at a good spot. Since we already have two items on Senna now, we kind of want to prioritize making tank items. And one thing that I used to do wrong with this comp is I used to make Shen my main damage tank. Now, unless you get the Shen augment, I don't think it's very worth it to go. Um, the big deciding factor of whether this comp performs well or not really is a Lowy. And the reason why people make Shen the, your main tank is because you're rolling and you hit three-star Shen very fast. It feels very bad chilling around for a Lowy. But in my honest opinion, a Lowy with tank items is actually tankier than like three-star Shen with tank items. It, it just is what it is. Um... Usually a mana item ain't too bad to have, a mana tank item that is, so like Redemption, Protector's Vow, something that gets your ability to cast right off the rip is really important, especially with Alawi, she gets a shield, she becomes a synthetic tank, she starts drain tanking a little bit. Um, and we're not just going to slam Archangel because there's nobody to really slam it on. Okay, so here's another rule of thumb for you guys. See how I said now you got silver augments? So Pandora's items. We already have all the items we really need. We I don't need Pandora's items. And if you guys do go Pandora's items, you usually want to go it on 2-1 uh, whenever you select that augment. That way you can start tailoring for the whole game. So if I got Pandora's on ido items, let's say, for example, all of stage 2, I can take losses without getting hit for 10-15. Or I'm getting forced out of the game where I'm chilling where I got several components on the bench. So a good example for Pandora's items would be if you're playing Yone. You would rock like double gargoyles bloodthirster i can get that gigabis if i'm playing duelist same thing for volley bear but now for tristana a lot of people don't know this but probably like last whisper double hurricane um i think she's one of those unique characters where like double hurricane would work really well on her you don't want to go like the stereotypical like um you know last whisper ie you know giant slayer or something like that i think you know going for the really niche gigabis is like super good uh, harm assist, always going to be good. It's always healing for the whole team. 
and I already know I'm going to go it when I see the selection, so you're going to see me refresh the other two. But double stacking really good augments in your game is broken. So, like, here's a, here's a good example, because it's been in the set for, like, three sets. Double best friends. Both, the units gain a shitload of armor and a shitload of attack speed. So, you're going to see it later in the game here, but when you give yourself a ton of attack speed, so five attack speed a second is what the game caps out at. And I already got attack speed from one augment, then another. So if I put Rage Blade on Senna, then I'm so much higher. I, like the base attack speed starting off for her to ramp to get where she's got to get going is much lower to hit the five attack speed. So you'll realize some games when people are playing duelists, let's say for example, why are they knee pumping through my team? Like versus sometimes you see them, it takes forever for them to ramp up. It's a difference between Volley Bear walking up like a bear, slapping them up a little bit and getting a few stacks versus that homie literally mauling your team. That, that's the difference here. So we're just going to refresh the other two augments and see what they are. So Silver Ticket. Now, you could argue that um, playing Silver Ticket, that it would be very good. Because, you know, on 3-2, we're going to be rolling a lot. But I'm at 94 HP. I'm very healthy. I basically have my whole board. I don't see the benefit in doing it. And I know that with Best Friends, um, the second trade is going to be just infinitely better. Because I, I played the game enough to just know what's up. Find Vintage, usually want this on 2-1 as well, guys, because you have to complete full items. Let them chill on your bench and let them die. Now, if these other two augments were complete booty, um, this might be an avenue to go because I have a large rod and a tier. There's not too many items I want to build out of that. The issue is, is I would have to wait all the way to Carousel and pray that it's a... Um, two component carousel which i don't think it will be there's no event or nothing like that so i'm gonna really only in three combats gain one item out of this and it could be you know something really bad the but the best thing about fine vintage is if you get it on two one you can slam a ton of items you just get them to be converted into support anvils and there's a really cool comp right now with heavenly and a ton of zz rots because the heavenly bonus goes to all your zz rots and you can have four or five zz rots on your board and they just kill everything towards the end of the game right so we're going to go best friends value we're going to keep it moving so here we're chilling on six now we level up and now we gain the maximum value besides level 8 and level 10 from our best friends because we're able to make pairs. Now we get the warden out and we're going to slowly, we're going to take our time now and we're going to slowly roll on 3-2 until we start hitting all of our 3 costs. Um, we're really going to focus on praying for Nalawi because although right now the bear is really good, um, he's going to fall off here shortly. They did buff him, I believe, in some patches, so... Him as a bruiser standing on the front line might be good for the time period, right? And um, we're going to go up to 50 gold. Now, one thing you guys are going to... I see a lot in my games, right? Is people will realize that other people are much higher tiers than them. Like level 8, you know, level 9. And they're chilling on 6 or 7 rolling for, let's say, Yone, Volley Bear, Duelists. My good rule of thumb, guys, is if you ain't losing, don't all in your gold yet. Like, the amount of times where I see people playing the game, and people don't realize, 50 HP is a lot of HP in TFT. 40 HP is a lot of HP in TFT. Um, It's when you get about to be like 30, high 20s, you got about two or three combats left in you to really make a money move. So when you're all in your gold, and let's say you're at like 40 HP, you know... You're missing out on a ton of gold interest here. So we finish off our center item, and then we're just chilling above 50. You want to be rolling above 50. You don't want to roll and break interest now because then you're missing out on free shops. Okay? And you're going to see every turn... Here's a way of thinking it. Every turn, I don't put money into my XP bar. I'm gaining two gold naturally. Because every combat, you gain two gold in experience. So essentially, every turn, I get five gold interest... For my base principle, I'm on a streak, so that's another three gold. So that's eight gold bonus. And then I'm getting another two gold for my experience bar. So it's just something to think about. You know, not a lot of people think about it. Um, and the, here's the real thing is a lot of boards cap out at level eight. Going level nine and level ten is like pretty unique for this set. Um, so don't think it's the norm. The reason why I sold the bear here and put the other things out is if you win a combat here, guys, you gain one bonus gold for that time. So I'll be able to make the 50 gold interest for me breaking econ here, grabbing pairs. And I just so happen to win. My board's very strong, so I feel very confident in that regard. 
Um, we're going to choose a tank item because we already have Senna item here. And one thing to know, guys, is even though I'm streaking right now, you guys are going to watch this is... If I didn't play perfectly this game all the way through to the end, which I do make a hiccup, I'm not going to lie to you guys, later in the game you'll see what it is, I got a little upset, but um, if I didn't play near perfectly where I max greeted, I made the most max cab board I could possibly do, and um, just made good decision making, I probably would have got second place this game. You guys need to take games like this where you're streaking this long and make the most capped board you can possibly do and position to be able to win like you guys not every game is just going to be handed to you that's like a first place that's why you can see i have two second places after this game and it's because i'm not like really greeting like if you have like a lead a lead you need to be doing doing the most with it right so here we have three's a crowd we're rolling for two costs so that's never going to happen we have martyr when your team when one of when one of your allies die your team heals for nine percent of the max hp i mean it's good the issue is is like alawi ain't dying like you you would be very surprised if like alawi's dead before your backline's dead honestly so martyr ain't too good for us so we're probably gonna refresh those ink shadow crest very good because i get a senna um for free and i already have a uh, nico on bench so it's like two senna's and I'm able to put this Ink Shadow Crest on somebody. It gives them HP. People don't really think about the emblem. It's kind of a tank item. And I'm also able to work towards 5 Ink Shadow, which is really good because people don't think about this. It's more than just items. It gives your Ink Shadow units bonus damage and um, I think it's like bonus APAD percentage or something like that. I don't know it off the top of the Chrome Dome. But it's very good in terms of amplifying your damage. And who's our main damage dealer? Senna. So... The crest is always good. It's just a plus one, two, so we're able to throw in a volley bear or something, get another item. So this would be leaning towards. So harm assist, yet again, is very good. So we already took two combat augments, and we basically have infinite econ from our win streak, and so we would never take balance budget. Harm assist, I could take it if you guys really don't think you're going to be able to fit out a plus one, especially if you're thinking you're only going to make it to level eight, and you're only able to be able to put in Kana Morgana for six ghostly. I wouldn't take the Ink Shadow Crest then. But in this case, we are, because I know, I know, I know I'm, how I'm going to play this one out. I'm going to go the distance. So we're just going to slam it right away, pretty much. And we're just going to keep rolling here at uh, 50 gold. I'm not going to break gold interest. The big thing here is um, managing your bench space, too, and realizing... I'm not going to be able to hit every single three star in the game unless the game helps me out a little bit. I'm not going to be able to hit Caitlyn three, Jax three, Shen three, Aatrox three, Senna three, Alawi three. It ain't, ain't going to happen, okay? Unless, unless you subscribe to Mort Dog the day of on that stream, he ain't coming through with that. Uh, he ain't coming through with that check for you. So it's just something to note. And here's the whole thing, guys. On three two, people are level eight. So if you're following like standard leveling, four or five is uh, usually where people go. But the people who have been loose streaking, like the dude who had 50 gold and who have a big bankroll, on um, 4-2 is usually when they're going to be rolling down for the Galio, Kaisa, 4 Twin Shot, Bruiser, hard stabilizing so they don't die now. So that's one thing to note. So you're going to see people like pumping up in levels and getting to where they got to get going. And um, you're going to see here the Volley Bear scared me for a second. The homie starts walking left. For like a hot second, I was like, oh, bro. As you can see, uh, oh, we didn't lose her. No, we didn't lose the win streak. We're keeping it alive. So at this point, we're just going to be looking for either pairs or, you know, something to kill the large rod with because this is like an AD primary comp. So you'd want like a chain vest pretty much to be able to get rid of the item. You can just make a thieves gloves here, which ain't the worst. And you see, I have to sell my Caitlyn here that I found because, you know, at a certain point, you have to make the big boy decision of what you're rolling for and what you're keeping. Um, eventually here, because that fight was getting pretty close, um, around 4-5, you have to make the decision to roll a little deep and try to finish off some of these three-star pairs, especially when I have, you know, what is it, eight Aatroxes. I might as well roll and see what I can hit a little bit. And then, now we get to chill out a little bit. We found the Senna, we found the Aatrox. I don't know if I chill here and keep rolling, but um, in some reality, I know that it's time to start pushing up in levels. And what we find is, oh, we found the Shen too. So what we find now is what we find. I, I'm not going to chill here and be rolling for a Jax 3-star. I know I need to start pumping levels and get to where I got to get going. I got to go level 7, I got to throw in the Morgana, I got to go level 8, throw in the Kane. 
I know I'm going to have to get the ink shadow out there. So while I have this little bit of a win streak I have, I can't throw away this bonus gold now into the reroll button. I have to start throwing it into the XP bu uh, button, right? So we're probably going to sell the Caitlyn here to make 50. Um, one big mistake, I guess I could say, is uh, I could probably have removed the... Um, which I, I still might hear. I don't remember verbatim what I did. It was like remove the redemption off the Aatrox so that way we can get the most out of a three star with Thieves Gloves. So we'll probably see that here in a second. Okay. It's about the same, right? So another thing to note, if you guys didn't know this, F5-1 is the last instance where you will... Um, you'll you'll be left with a component, right? So you see the BF sword on the Caitlyn. You won't have enough unless you high roll in the early game because it is RNG on how many items you get from neutrals. You're gonna be left with a component left over unless you get a Lissandra that'll kill something and farm an item for you. Okay, so that's something to note. And of course, now York reduces our shop rerolls by one gold down to one gold. So it is what it is. I think I might. I don't know. Maybe on like the third turn here, I might like you know fish a little bit. Um, if you rolled here for, like, Alawi 3, I wouldn't blame you. But in all reality, we're level 7. People are, like, level... 5-5 five, five is standard interval for people going level 9, by the way, guys. So it's giving you a frame of mind of where we should be. Um, you know, XP bar. And it's really bad here that we lost our win streak. So we just lost out on, like, a ton of gold a turn. And so we're just chilling. Now... I did a little bit of reroll in here, I'm not gonna lie to you. You know, a little a little bit of greed and you gotta have some fun with the game. But one thing to note is would you guys in your in this instance here, Nico the Jacks, and figure that you're gonna find the Alawi? Ask yourself this because I have enough HP, I have enough gold. There's no reason with my natural shops why I should ever use this Nico to not be able to get both three star uh Alawi and Jacks here. It would just be me being impatient. You know, I have 80 HP. You know, how many times do you guys throw away games where you're just like, okay, I'm just going to, you know, I'm just going to roll deep. The game's coming to an end. No, bro. I got like eight combats still of like losing 10 HP a combat. And I'm not going to lose 10 HP with like this busted of a board. So I'm just going to keep hitting that XP button. And at, like I said, level eight's a big power spike because you gain another two units with best friends value and it's double. So that's why I pushed up in the tier here. And now I can chill. This is a very stabilized board. Okay, um, I am, like, I'd be very surprised. The biggest thing that I would say that made this comp very good, especially, like, versus this Faded here, really is the Obsidian Cleaver on uh, Senna. There, you would have, and Ghostly in this case, but you would have not gotten through that Thresh that you guys just saw. That homie was thicker than a bowl of oats. Like, you're just not doing that in most games. And at this point, I kind of decided, what is my win con to close out this game? My win con to close out this game, guys, is not, it. well, there's a few. And it really depends on how the game starts serving you up. Now, if the game just keeps spitting Morganas and Canes out at me, with this type of league, guys, you want to go for a three-star four cost. If the game's literally just up-chucking Morganas and Canes at you, they're like, here's another, here's another, here's another. It's like when you go over to a relative's house and they start serving you food. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, on like Thanksgiving or something like that. You just keep taking it. But if not, if the game's not helping you, play what the game's giving you. In this instance... I'm not getting a lot of Canes and Morganas. You see, there's still one cost. So my best thing for me to do, the best thing for me, advantageously, is to just start hitting that XP button um, and just go level 9, level 10, get another two units that are legendaries with best friend's value. We're going to be looking for Udyr for Ink Shadow, and then it also gives me Behemoth and probably something else. You know, um, it says something to note. Also, positioning starts mattering a lot more in these later fights, guys. Um, usually you want to have Senna Caitlyn on the left side. I don't know why you do, even though you have sniper's values. It just, it's one of those things where you, you see everybody else doing it, so you do it type thing. You know what I'm saying? Um, another thing to note is I am making a major blunder here, guys. A major blunder. I can do math. I am not dumb. Why am I pouring my gold into my XP bar right now? It don't matter if it's in the XP bar or if I'm chilling on 80 or 90 gold right now in my inventory. You know what I'm doing right now? I'm eliminating options for myself while I'm playing the game. What does this mean? I could have 90 gold right now, and then I look at the shop, I get two Morganas. I look at the next shop, I get another Morgana. Now I'm chilling at like five Morganas. I, you know, and then I'm like, okay, maybe, maybe this guy starts hitting me for 20 a turn. 
I might not have the option now to go level 10, but I might have the option to YOLO for like a Morgana 3, a Kane 3. I'm, I'm taking, when you have this, because all this game is, is an army building resource management game. So if I'm taking options away from myself, I'm literally helping the enemy. Something to think about. He's, he's going to get a heavenly spatula here. I was punching my keyboard. How, how's the game going to spawn the heavenly spatula next to the dude who wants heavenly? It's like, okay, you know, is what it is. I wanted to get the five ink shadow out there. Um, That's why we pumped levels here a little bit. And we're kind of chilling now. He's going to get Randowin's value. Um, And this is the blunder I was talking about. I was trying to position, man. I'm old. I was fucking up. Missing out on two three-star units with a ton of armor and attack speed, man. I deserve this lost combat. It is what it is, man, but... Oh, well. Yeah, you can see here, man. I'm so disappointed in myself for that. We're just gonna keep... We're still gonna keep moving on him. The, uh, one of the big things is you kind of want to have the Senna hitting the Volley Bear at the start a little bit so you can shred all that armor and magic resist he's getting. And you can see we body him, we hit him a little bit, we hit him a little bit, but we're, but we're losing combats, man. It's not like this guy's weak, especially when he hits Aurelia too. He's not going to be weak for whatever reason. Because as you guys think about it, we have like a lot of frontline, but the vast majority of our damage is coming from Senna. Like usually you have something else sprinkled in there that helps you out a little bit. Um, like Morgana ain't doing shit. She's tickling. That ain't doing nothing to Volley Bear. Caitlyn ain't doing nothing to any of them. That line shot hits for 250 damage at this point in the game. Kane, he's just a trait buff. He's just here to exist. Allow he's holding the door like in Game of Thrones. And that's about it. Kaisa, she looks pretty. But, I mean, that's about it, man. She ain't doing a whole lot. You see how, like, the, the bear, bro? The bear ain't playing. So we're starting to win these combats, and then now I decided I'm going to go, I'm going to push 9 here to get another 2 best friends value, and just see if we can find something else that goes out into the board. I don't think Huey here's the way, as you can imagine. Uh, getting set out there, which would be another unit, to be able to actually have CC. Set can grab Volley Bear, or one of these homies, and yeet him into the air and buy time for Senna to ramp up her damage a little bit more. But just as easily, the guy hit Aurelia too, man. I could, uh, yeah, see, I'm losing combat. I just pushed level 10. Now I have no gold. I'm like, oh, shit. Am I actually going to lose this game? And one thing to note is uh, I put in Lissandra right now because I get the Arcanist. But also, she CCs really good. So that's what we were kind of hoping for here. We need to go the cane. And as you can see, I'm not scouting. This late in the game, scouting should be the most important thing. Because you're going to see now. Um... Being left side ain't good for me when the bear's left side. So now I'm starting to get a hit. And it's gonna it goes to show you guys that if I didn't play this game at in greed as much as I did and didn't play the best I possibly could, I would have lost this game. It's something to think about, guys, because how many times are you throwing your games, man? Um, and then we start to see the way that he's positioning, we're moving things around. And another thing is like pre-placement, nobody talks about this, but having the Caitlin uh morgana in the back with the senna where it's already on those two hexes where they're getting best friends value and all i got to do is drag and drop my units where i'm automatically swap positioning very easiest way to position late game right so all right i hope you guys learned something have a wonderful day um i tried to explain as much as i could for you guys it was a very long game and i don't think if i made the right decisions throughout the whole entire game i would have lost all right uh have a good day